Hey everyone, this is Professor Faye with your anatomy lesson of the day. Today we're going to make a long bone out of clay. So hopefully it'll look something like this. This picture was taken from the Laboratory Manual for Anatomy and Physiology, 6th edition, by Allen and Harper. That's the goal. All right, let's get it done. So I have a sort of goal, long bone, uh, diagrammed out already or modeled out. Um, but first what you're going to do is take some clay and roll it into maybe about a five inch log. That's also probably an inch or so in diameter. So once you get that done, pause the video if you need to, to roll out clay and stuff. Once you get that, that done, you're gonna take a little knife and uh, this is just a plastic knife and I'm just gonna cut lengthwise um, about halfway down the bone and then put a notch across. So you can see I've got a notch across and then down the side, around, down the other side, and we're gonna just try to cut this out entirely. So what you're doing is sort of taking a longitudinal section off of the bone. So now I have part of the bone that's still fully intact diameter-wise, and then I have kind of have the diameter of the bone this way, all right? So long bones have a medullary cavity. And so the first thing we're gonna do now is find that medullary cavity at the center. So we're gonna scoop it out. So I'm just gonna take the knife and drag it down and scoop out some clay. All right, now the clay that I'm scooping out, I'm actually just gonna to push to the end of the bone. And then you can continue to use the knife or you can sort of hollow it out a little bit more just by using your fingers, you can pinch the sides up a tiny bit too, kind of build the depth of that medullary cavity a bit. That would be fine. So now we've got a little medullary cavity in there, sort of like a boat, someone could sit in there and you could float on the water, all right? So then we're gonna put on the ends of the long bone. So the long bone has what's called an uh, epiphyses. Those are the ends of the long bone. And so I have just two about ping pong, maybe golf ball sized bits of clay to kind of mold those. So I'm just gonna roll that a little bit and then smoosh it into a bit of a pancake for the end that's got our boat uh, seating in it. And sort of smoosh that on there, just smoosh it on. And then I'm gonna use my thumb and just drag the clay up the backside and all around to really attach the end of that all clay. And then you can shape it a bit if you want, or you can just let it be this kind of rounded nub. All right, and you're gonna take your other clay, roll it a little bit. When you roll it, it gets a little bit warmer, a little stickier, so it just kind of sticks to the other end of the bone. And I'm gonna again drag that clay up with my thumb all around so that sticks on really nicely. And again, you can try to model this after a particular long bone in the skeleton, or you can just let it be this more rounded nub, at least you can tell that there's kind of a distinct shape um, of the epiphyses, the ends of the long bones. So the epiphysis on one end is joined to the diaphysis, which is the shaft of the bone, by an area called the metaphysis. And so that'd be kind of right about here. So epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis. Over here, it'd be epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis. The epiphyses have a proximal end and a distal end. And so the proximal epiphysis, so if this was my humerus, and I put this on my arm this way, the proximal epiphysis would be closer to my shoulder and the distal epiphysis would be closer to my elbow. So it depends on every bone and how it's uh, situated in your body, whether or not you call the particular epiphysis the proximal or the distal epiphysis. All right, now into the boat, seating area, we uh, really just the medullary cavity. We're gonna take the knife and actually make a hole through here. This is not a sharp knife, so I'm gonna just kind of poke it through until I can feel the knife hitting my finger. You can see that jutting out a little bit now. And I'm gonna give it a little twist. Hopefully I don't bust through the clay up here, I got lucky. And I'm gonna go now from the outside and put that in. This is called a nutrient foramen. There's gonna be an artery that runs through this hole that we've just put in here, okay? So you can take a little bit of red and roll it out pretty thin. It's gonna be thin enough to get into this hole. And so now we see an artery 
entering this nutrient foramen. So this is the nutrient artery. And then I'll extend towards the uh, epiphysis of the bone. So take a minute to pause the video and do that if you need to. So now that you've got that threaded through, what you need is a tissue. So you can take a tissue. With any luck, it's like a double layered tissue. Right? And you're just going to cut an L shape into it that looks like this. Okay? And then for the part that got cut out there, you're going to just take that. And if it's a double layer tissue, just separate the layers. We're going to make the endosteum out of this, which is the inner lining of the medullary cavity. So you'll just take your little piece of tissue and plunk it right in here. You can trim it to size if you need to. Mine's a little bit long here, so I'm going to cut that. This is just made up of some osteogenic cells, which are bone forming cells. So now I've got a lining inside the medullary cavity. And the nutrient artery, I'm just going to kind of loop in there. There's a bunch of vessels. There's going to be little branches of this vessel going up towards the epiphysis of this blood vessel. Okay. And then the medullary cavity is you know, hollow. And so it's actually lined with yellow bone marrow. So we're going to take some yellow clay and pop that in here too. So now we've got our medullary cavity lined with endosteum. There's uh, blood vessels in that medullary cavity and also yellow bone marrow. On the outside of the bone, it is surrounded by periosteum, which has got two layers to it. So you're going to take your L-shaped tissue, lay it down, put your bone right on top of it, and you made the L-shape so that you can wrap up your bone with your cross section still in view, but then take that periosteum all the way around the bone because it does wrap all the way around the bone's diaphysis um, and even down to the epiphyses. As long as there's not also articular cartilage, which would be on the very ends of the long bones, it'd be wrapping around any part of the bone not covered also by or not covered instead by articular cartilage. So it's got two layers to it. There's an inner layer of osteogenic cells and an outer layer of um, just like dense irregular connective tissue. So this wraps up our long bones. There's a blood supply um, within that outer layer, that, that periosteum as well. So our bones are very well vascularized, meaning that they have a blood supply. Uh, the next thing is that our long bones have, are composed of both compact bone and spongy bone, or trabecular bone, as some people call it. Um, and so what we're going to do is just take the tip of the knife and make some spongy bone. And so Right about where the epiphysis joins up with the metaphysis and diaphysis, we're going to draw in a line. That's going to be our epiphyseal line. This is where the, uh, where the epiphysis is anchored to the rest of the bone. And I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow clay in there to make it stand out more, that, that epiphyseal line. In kids, this would be the epiphyseal plate or growth plate. Uh, where we have cells that are very actively dividing here to make new bone. So that's how bones get longer. Um, and then on both sides of that, here and up here, we're going to put some polka dots in there to represent uh, spongy bone, trabecular bone tissue. So you can see those dots. And then there's basically a thin layer of compact bone tissue on the outside of uh, this epiphysis, and then all the way uh, down the uh, length of the diaphysis is almost entirely compact bone tissue. So our bones are incredibly strong because of the arrangement of what are called osteons in this compact bone. All around the spaces, filling the spaces that are created by the trabecular bone, which are these sort of like, they have kind of a lattice-like network effect or look to them. Uh, inside of those spaces is red bone marrow, which is where all your blood cells are created. So the spongy bone is important to have. It lightens our bones up so we're not dragging around these big heavy bones in our skeleton. And then we need more muscle mass to, to move the bones. And then we need to eat more food and so on. So that would be um, you know, a challenge to just maintaining our bodies. So they're a little bit more light in, in weight because of the spongy bone, but also gives a place for the red bone marrow to be. So that is how to make a long bone out of some clay. I hope you enjoyed your anatomy lesson of the day.